We now turn our attention to this feature in dplyr called pipes. It's an incredibly useful feature and especially in the context of the fact that very often we are given a, power, a large data set and then we perform many different operations on the data set to get our final result. Right? So in other words we may take this data set called uh, flights and then we could perform one operation on it take the result of that, perform another operation on that, take the result of that, perform another operation on that, and so on and so on for a very long chain of operations. Okay. Now when this happens, uh, what results is that if you assign every result to a new variable and then operate on the new variable and so on, first of all you end up creating a lot of variables and secondly the code for the processing becomes really difficult to read. And pipes is a feature that just allows us to write code in a very intuitive manner. That's the whole idea. right? So again, going back to the scenario I was talking about performing operations in series. So here I'm just taking a simple example. Suppose I've got a vector called that. So I say x is unique that. Okay. So basically x is going to have, is going to be a vector and it's going to be a vector of all the unique elements of that. Now I say y is length of x, right? So in other words, I took that, I performed the unique operation on that and got a result. I took that result and I'm performing the length operation on that result, okay? And then I'm taking the result and performing the square root operation on that result, right? So here you can see what's going on, that operations are happening in what might be called as a pipeline. So I take that, I throw it into the pipeline, and within the pipeline, the first operation that's performed on it is unique, right? Then unique gets the result and passes it on to another function called length. Length does its job and passes the result on to another function called square root, okay? So things are operation uh, are happening in series, okay? Now, this string of code that we have here correctly represents what we are doing but it's not obvious just by looking at it that things are actually happening in a pipeline. So to understand this code, we have to put in a lot of effort and say, oh, this x is going here. Okay, so y is operating on the result of that. Uh, then y is going here, so z, uh, square root, is operating on the result of that and so on. Okay, it's a lot of effort for us to look at this. And of course, with this series of just three operations in the pipe, it's no big deal. But very often, you have more operations in the pipeline and more complicated operations. Okay, So to prevent against the code becoming unreadable and to prevent us uh, against making some silly errors simply because the code is complex. right? So because of that, they have invented this feature called pipes. Okay, So here I'm taking this result of square root z and putting it through yet another operation. Now don't worry about whether these operations are meaningful. They actually are not. I just want to show you what it means for operations to happen in a pipeline. Okay, So this ends up creating a lot of intermediate variables, hard to keep track of what's going on, and it's not intuitive. Wouldn't it be better for us if we understood the fact that this is really a pipeline? That makes things so much easier to understand. Okay, So this is the same as really p is log of square root of length of unique of that. That's what's going on here. right? So you first take unique of that, pass the result to length, pass the result to square root, pass the result to log. Okay, But this is also not very helpful. It's not really better in any way because once again here the sequence of operations is unique length square root log whereas when you read the code you're seeing it the exact reverse order log square root length unique. So once again our mind has to put in some effort to understand this. Okay, Code need not be like this code should ideally be uh, written in such a way that you look at it and it's immediately obvious what the code is doing. Okay, So that makes it easy for people to understand the code. That also makes it easy for people to make changes to code. Okay, Now whenever you're writing any code, as beginners we have a tendency to approach the writing of code as if it's a one-time job. Okay, But in reality that is never the case. You write some code, you yourself may come back to it after a couple of days. That is one scenario. 
and it always happens because you do something, you learn something from that, you're trying to do something else that's similar, you want to take the code that you've already done and tweak it to get the new job done rather than writing everything from scratch, right? So we keep revisiting our code all the time and more importantly in a large organization what typically happens is somebody might write code and six months down the road somebody else may have to go and look at the code. Okay, so for example, you may have a consulting company that developed some system. So they gave you all the code, you didn't write it. But now there's some bug happening or some enhancement needs to be done. And somebody within your organization now has to take a look. Or maybe somebody from another consulting organization has to take a look at this code. Okay, so now if the code is complicated, then it takes more time for you or them to look at it. And there is also greater likelihood that they don't understand the code properly because the code is complicated and therefore new errors start cropping in. So because of all that, we want code to be transparent and clear. Okay. So what is really going on here is we're taking that, passing it to the unique function, passing the result to the length function, passing that result to a square root function, passing that result to log and producing our final output. Okay, so this is what I mean by things are happening in a pipeline. You're throwing that into one end of the pipeline and during, within the pipeline several operations are being performed and out comes the result. So, okay, it's almost like a, a chemical processing plant, a refinery, petroleum refinery if you like. Okay, so now we introduce the pipe operator that makes the code like the previous code really explicit. Okay, the pipe operator is percent greater than percent okay and uh, the way to write it you can of course enter the three characters percent greater than percent but a convenient way to write, enter this character in in our studio is to put command shift n a command shift m press those three keys together our studio will throw in the pipe operator for you okay command shift m uh, control shift m for windows command shift m for mac I use a Mac so I keep on saying command but if you're using Windows just press Control plus Shift plus M and it will insert the pipe operator and as a bonus it will give you one space before and one space after as well okay so you can just you don't have to put in a space before you press Control Shift M just type what you need put Control Shift M you'll get a space you'll get the pipe operator and then you can continue typing okay so the way in which you write this expression in the form of a pipe is to say that pipe right so this is where you're taking that and throwing it the beginning of the pipe okay then within the pipe the first operation that takes place is unique okay now normally when you write unique you'll have to provide an argument to unique right you'll say unique that or something okay but when you're doing it in a pipe the f the first argument to the function that is appearing in the pipe is always what is coming on the pipe Okay, so here that is coming along on the pipe and therefore that is implicitly the first argument to unique. Again for length you usually provide an argument but since we have not, in, in the case of a pipe the argument is always what's coming on the pipes, right? So unique of that is coming on the pipe as the first argument to length. Okay, the result of length is going as the first argument to square root. The result of square root is going as the first argument to log. That's the whole pipe, right? Now, if you look at this code, the moment you start seeing the pipe signs, you know, okay, things are happening in a pipeline. That sort of takes away a lot of complexity for you. And then what is the sequence of the pipeline? Exactly as you're seeing it. Take that, run it through unique, take the result, run it through length, take the result, run it through square root, take that result, run it through log, and that's your final result. Okay? Of course, the result, if you want to assign it to P, you can always say P is assigned all of this okay so this is what really makes things very very uh, convenient of course when your function uh, has no other arguments than what is coming on the pipe you can even leave out the parentheses okay I don't prefer to do that but you could do that right if you just say unique uh, the pipe uh, assumes that this is a name of a function right so you don't have to tell it explicitly it's the name of a function by putting a parenthesis and if you don't supply any arguments to that function it's automatically in any case it's going to take what is coming on the pipe as the first argument okay so if the function has only one argument you can leave out the parenthesis if you want I don't do it you could okay so that unique is the same as unique that 
okay just to make sure that you uh, use pipes correctly right because after all what's going on here you're taking that sending it on the pipe to unique and and therefore that will go as the argument to unique so it's really the same as this so to generalize that if you have x which is some object and you're sending it along the pipe to some function called func the result is the same as func of x at the risk of belaboring the point let me point out here that x pipe to func is the same as func of x we've discussed this in the last uh, slide so you're saying x pipe func and of course as before we know that the way the pipe operator operates it takes the results of the result of the expression on the left and sends it as the first argument to the function on the right right sometimes it can be an operator we'll look at that later but for now think of this as a function so x is going as the first argument to this of course this doesn't have to be just an object this can itself be an expression of some kind so the result of this expression is going to go as the first argument to the function following the pipe sign so let's do some examples suppose you want to do n row mpg ideally you would write n row mpg just like this you don't want to use pipes for this but suppose you were to use pipes you'll write it as mpg piped to n row right because after all n row is the function mpg is the object you want uh, it to operate on so you send it instead of sending it directly as an argument here you're sending it through a pipe of course for this expression i would much rather write it like this than like this okay now the portion following the pipe can be written on the same line as shown here but i prefer to write it on the following line because most of the time your pipes will be you know three four five deep so it's better to uh, enumerate them line after line just makes it easier to read so another example suppose you want to do range mpg dollar highway right so mpg is the data frame highway is one of the columns and we want to find the range of values for that particular column so one way we might do that is pipe it like this mpg dollar highway pipe it to range because after all range is the function and the object you're uh, uh, sending to it is mpg dollar highway so put mpg dollar highway on the left hand side and range on the right hand side okay so this would be fine and notice that the portion following the pipe can be the same on the same line or another line just like before no problem but you can also do this in a slightly more sophisticated way that is in order instead of saying mpg dollar highway you can even do that using pipes you're saying mpg pipe it to dot dollar right that's what i meant when i said the thing following the pipe can be a function or it can be an operator in this case we are putting the dollar operator following the pipe sign but just to make things clear for the pipe you need to precede it with a dot okay dot is in fact a short form for referring to the object that is passed along the pipe right so think of dot as simply standing for mpg so this is the same as mpg dollar highway right so you're taking mpg piping it to the the dollar operator extracting the highway column from that and then passing the result on to range okay so this is another way of writing it when you're using subscripting operators like the dollar or the square brackets so again do mean of mpg dollar highway na dot rm equals true this is what we want to do so once again we can do it just like before mpg dollar highway pipe it to mean but of course we still need to put na dot rm equals true and we put it like this now here na dot rm looks like it's the first argument it's not the first argument is mpg dollar highway because whenever you have a function following the pipe its first argument is always what is coming on the pipe okay so this is implicitly and a dot r a mean mpg dollar highway is here is of course based on what we looked at in the previous slide another way to write this is like this you say mpg pipe it to dot dollar highway and then take the result and calculate the mean mean and a dot r m equals true in this case uh, mpg dollar highway is going to be the first implicit first argument so now we are doing one more operation we are saying mpg small is filter mpg highway greater than 30 so now what we are doing is looking at the application of pipes in the context of dplyr functions okay so i'm filtering mpg 
for to take only the cars that have a highway mileage of greater than 30 putting it in a data frame called a mpg small table called mpg small and then we are arranging that by descending order of highway mileage okay so clearly what we are doing here is we are taking the object mpg pushing it through the filter function taking the result pushing it through the range function so once again the pipeline is very clear the reason that this is a pipeline is we are putting the variable uh, the results of filter in a variable and passing that object to a range so clearly this is a pipeline so we can again say mpg filter highway greater than 30 pipe the result to a range descending order of highway let's look at one more dplyr example here so we are saying mpg by trans is grouped by mpg trans right in other words we are taking the mpg data frame and grouping it by this column called trans trans being transmission okay and then we are taking the result of that operation mpg by trans summarize and calculate the average highway miles that is mean of highway so for every value of transmission we are going to get the average of the highway mileage so once again we can see clearly this is a pipeline operation we are doing something here taking the result of that and doing something on the next line so we can say mpg pipe it to the group by function group by trans once again the first argument mpg is coming on the pipe and then say summarize average highway is mean highway pass it on to the sum so we will be doing this quite a lot taking a data frame grouping it by something and then summarizing it by something 